when you talk about media, actually, and yeah, you, you end up studying something like media, then you get into a job and you don't like it. Now, you have to figure out, at the moment when you still have that job, how you will get to like it. There's this thing of, is it water you are, grass where you are? Now, you have to water your, and that's my perspective. If then you wait to get the one that you like, first of all, you'll have a bad attitude at work, and it will show. And the day people are being laid off, or the day the company can get rid of you, you will be the first one in line. People, and I've seen it happen. They say, that guy, we've always wanted to get them out. That's the first person out. Now, once you're the first person out, it's harder to get the next job when you are out of a job. I always advise people, even if you don't like this job, because you are coming to work just for yourself, it's not for the company. Even if you don't like this job, do it so well that it makes it easier for you to move to the next uh, place. And then uh, you can always find a way to develop interest in something, even if you don't like it, because at that particular moment, you don't have any options. You have to be very pragmatic. If that better job was there, you would be in it. Because it's not there, like the one that uh, you have currently until you get uh, another one. Then there was a question about long term. I have a very short as attention span. I can't remember what, what was that about. Okay, like I was speaking about uh, in real estate, for example, you've decided that you want to, you want to set up. Oh, I've remembered it. The long term returns. Actually, that was a good question. You have to think long term. You have to be prepared to plant trees whose shade you will never sit under. So real estate is a long-term game. Uh, the only way we can even pay the returns on a short-term basis is because a lot of our real estate is pre-sold. But even if it's pre-sold, the money we collect from the buyers can only pay the interest on a monthly uh, basis. It is not yet at a point where shareholders can get a return. So you have to think very long-term. Real estate is a five to 10 year game. Now it looks like five to 10 years is a long time, it is not a long term. You have to have a very long term view. If you have a short term view, the results will be as short term and as unsustainable as that short term, uh, short term view. I hope uh, Madam DBC have answered the question. Now, who's going to take the mentorship and training? Okay, come come on stage. So the question of what, what are the mentorship and training opportunities at Cyton, I think. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Egla. I work as part of the brand and marketing department at Cyton. And <coughs> If I understand it correctly, I'm only here to talk about um, the training and mentorship opportunities site on offers. Um, you mentioned CYLP, the intensive, it's an intensive 12 week program that is meant for fresh graduates uh, to give you some of the on the job skills. Uh, it is very demanding, it is very intense, it's definitely not for the week, but if you are able to somehow, if you are able to make it through the program, you, the skills that you learn along the way, not just the hard skills, but some of the soft skills, they will earn you success wherever you go. So whether you decide to pursue a career or whether you decide to start a business, it is, it's, it's a very useful program. We also have the Summer Associates Program, Site on Summer Associates Program, and site on eHub for entrepreneurs. It's, it's site on entrepreneurs hub. So this is for people who, who want to start a business. So you, you are grown, you are taken through lessons that you would need in order to make you successful. And if it is something that is investable, you could even secure funding for your business. Yes, that's, that's it. I have a very simple question that means I've been hard. Uh, one thing I understand, uh, before our guest speaker came up with Saito, he was, a, he was a, an employee of Peter. At least for you, you had a stepping stone. 
where you are now. Now here is me without stepping for you. <laughs> From Peter. How can I make one and times do change? The tricks you use the other time is not the tricks people are using this time. So you can advise me accordingly. Now, now okay, I follow Saiton and I'm very happy to see you in our school and I'm very happy also to be placed here by the government last semester. Okay. I don't know if it is supposed to be a myth or a whole what people say. <laughs> like a Kikuyu, you are not to be raking money. And the moment you see money, you are very happy. Like, like now, I'm so happy seeing Saiton here because. <laughs> <laughs> For Aruya, it is not that, that the moment Aruya sees Aredo, is very happy. Now I'm very happy seeing Saiton here. I, I usually follow you. Like yesterday, I was in Loka, the Alma. And somehow, when I'm walking in there, it's like I own something there. It's like I own a share there. I'm sure it's very happy. Now my question was, I have, a, I have an idea, but implementing it is very difficult because it needs a lot of capital. Now my question was, do you have a plan of supporting those people who have ideas, but they, they, they usually lack something that, like finance? That was my question. Thank you. <laughs> and, and also, <laughs> I forgot that this. I wish I can see you even, even if it is five minutes. Of, in your head, you know, it might be very fixed, but I wish I can see you even if it's for five minutes because even if I'm, I'll be going to heaven, I'll, I'll have to cancel that today. <laughs> my question is actually, my lecturers tell me that being a media student doesn't mean that one day we'll get to a radio or a media house. It's actually, you may think about building your own future, inventing your own future, making, a, making an advertisement company. Now, when I ask my friends, my friends tell me, you have to save money so that one day you will build that media or that advertisement company. So that, adult, if you come you want to do Or, when I can do that, you lose up or you, or you have saved money. But now you have come here confusing me. You have set up, you have set up me to invest with 1,000 shillings. Actually, can you just elaborate it well so that I can know if I can invest or do savings? Now, let me start. I, I did get his name, but he asked, uh, how can I invest even if it's 1,000? You know, things are becoming digital. So from your phone, if you just hit star, 809 hash star 809 hash you get the steps to be able to uh, invest and even if you can't invest star 809 hashtag even if you can't invest please tell your friends tell your parents check this thing out and then give us feedback we are a firm that likes feedback you can give it through facebook or wherever we will uh, get it. Now, Dennis, uh, what, what, sorry, you said what's your major? Sorry? Oh, finance. Yeah, but a uh, very lively guy. Maybe you should also try comedy. But <laughs> the question you're asking is very interesting. I have ideas, but no money. Now, Dennis, th there is no shortage of ideas. Everybody has ideas. The shortage is in execution, and as I go back to the first pillar of my talk, the, the issue should not be I have the idea, the issue should be what is the pain point that I am solving. And in business you get to hear a lot, a lot about the businesses that worked. I talked about Uber, I talked about um, Equity Bank. The ones you don't hear about are the ones that do not work. Uh, I think there's something about history is written by those who survive wars or those who survive to tell their stories. There's quite a bit of entrepreneurs, and as I said, chances of success are just 10% in the final analysis. There are a lot of entrepreneurs who had incredibly good ideas, put quite a bit of money behind them, and if you just go back to your own home you ask your parents, your own rural areas or urban areas and ask people, have you ever tried a business idea? 
a lot of people have tried a business idea because they are chasing a return on it and it never worked. I think to, to increase your odds of success, you need to be very clear <coughs> what is the impact you are trying to have. If it's about money, it reduces your chances of success. That does not mean people who are just chasing money will not succeed. Many will succeed. But if you are approaching entrepreneurship as a profession, there's a pattern or a method or a way to get there. And it can't just be like two things. One, I have an idea. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I'm just saying you can't start with, I have an idea and I need to make money. Chances of success will be incredibly lower if that is the approach. The question from Ombati, where do you start? And you use the word tricks. There are no tricks. You have to, I mean, if it's trick, it's like you are gambling. You have to approach it from where you are. I keep going to what is the impact. Now, if you were to find, to speak with the, the co-founders of Cyton, interestingly, we never sat down and said, now we want to be entrepreneurs. Now you want, we want to uh, start a business. And actually, if you go back and read, and it's all out there in, the, in social media, and it's been written about, our departure from our previous brand was actually very acrimonious. Now, the reality is, we had an idea. We wanted to go directly to individuals and raise money and do real estate. And we did that at our previous pla uh, platform. We raised five billion shillings and got a very good set of real estate. Now, at some point, there was a debate. This real estate that you got, are you building it for your investors or are you building it for the shareholders of this firm? Now, we are investment managers, we work for shareholders. So at that point we said, wait a minute, if there is any debate or confusion as to who we are working for, we are prepared to leave as a firm and go set, I mean as a team, no, it's not, not a firm, as a team and go set up our own uh, individual brand. So we did not have a step or a trick, we knew the pain point in society and we were willing to solve it whether at our previous brand or at the next brand. So I will take you back, Umbati, to the same place I'm taking Dennis. Don't worry about the step. If you're wondering where do I start, you've probably not found a pain point. <coughs> because if you find that pain point, people will come. I mean, think about us guys five years ago, we actually were wondering who will be our first client? Who, who will give us money? Where do we start? But we said, you know what, the idea makes sense. Let's go out there and, and, uh, and see if people will bite. And progressively, people are biting. People will take shots at you, but just keep uh, executing. So I think that answers Ombati, it answers, his, it answers Dennis uh, where to invest. I think I've given him an idea. Now I'm back to Kosge. You got a REIT manager license, what are you doing with it? You have you, f you first have to get the license, and now we're in the process of developing a product, the Real Estate Investment Trust, to be invested in development, so you should be seeing that uh, out very soon. Then, I think there was also another one, uh, kindly talk about Site on Diaspora. Site on Diaspora is our, the products are the same, it's the same money market fund, it's the same real estate, it's the same Site on Education Investment Plan, but here we are targeting people in the diaspora, so we've made it easy. We have somebody in Washington, D.C. We have an office there, and we also have a bank account in a U.S. bank where somebody in the diaspora does not need to wire to us money here. They can just put it into our uh, account in the U.S. So that's what we are doing with the diaspora. There was another question here. A site on innovative, the site on innovative culture is highly valued in your farm. What are such kind of innovation that you can advise us to go for? Now, innovation is, when people think about innovation, and this was from Brian, they t tend to think of technology, new things, but innovation is really taking a step back and observing how things are, are happening and figuring out how do I tweak this to work better. We do have an innovation uh, team, two ladies, a uh, lady called Sally and Eneki, uh, they run the innovation and service design team, and they just look at problems within the firm, how we can improve client experience. They get people into a room, 
uh, they call it ideation. Everybody gives an idea, how can we resolve this thing? Then they gravitate to one solution, they prototype or they test it out and see, is it working? Then we progress. If it's not working, we kill it and we try again. So you can innovate anywhere, wherever you are. To be able to do it, just take a step back and learn what is the process of innovation. The same way there's a process to entrepreneurship, there's a very specific process on how to innovate. And actually, if you have that innovation mindset, then uh, you can get quickly uh, where to start somebody like Ombati. So if there's one assignment I can give you, go out, Google how to innovate and follow that process of innovation. You'll be surprised how many things you can resolve. Then there was a question on what are the common investment mistakes that uh, an investor can make and how to avoid them. The number one in, uh, mistake is greed. Thinking you can make quick money in the shortest amount of time possible. Again, just like in invest entrepreneurship, those whose businesses don't work, you won't, you won't hear much from them. You'll only hear from those whose businesses are working. The same for investment. The people on this side are much older than the people on that side. If you talk to anyone on this side and tell them, be candid on how much money you've lost trying to make money, a lot of people have lost money trying to make money, just trying to say, how much can I get? Start by asking yourself, how much money can I lose? And can I afford to lose this money? And to be able to answer that question, you will find that if somebody is telling you, go invest in quail eggs and your money will double. If you ask yourself, do I really understand quail eggs? Do I understand the dynamics? Why is it that there is demand? Is it a sustain? If you spend your time, you might lose out on the first round of money making in quail eggs, but you are going to save yourself a lot of losses. I watched when people were making money in bitcoins and I could see the price going up, but I told myself, you know what, I don't understand this thing. So let me sit out and wait. And there's a chance, as Warren Buffett said at some point, that I missed the dot-com uh, era. Knowing what I know, I would have gone in. So some you will miss. There'll be legitimate ways of making business, of making money. But if you just stick to being disciplined, I will not invest until I really understand how it works, then to me that's the number one mistake that people make, getting into things that uh, you don't understand. Don't chase the money, first understand the risk. I think that brings me to the end of this set of questions and I think we are gonna take one last round, if that's okay. So starting with Samuel's questions, uh, what are the challenges? Now, entrepreneurship in itself, when we talk about finding a pain point putting people together, working, executing. Entrepreneurship by itself is a challenge. By definition, it's an incredible challenge to do this. Because remember, you have cash at stake, reputation. By the time you have a brand like Cyton, the issue is not even how much money now you can lose. The issue is losing your reputation as a team. Because remember, we've gotten 11 billion shillings from 5,000 people. Um, my grandmother, my dad, my mom, my sister, uncles, all of them are in Saiton. How do you go and tell them this thing, I can't give you back your money? It can't, you have, the, the fear of lose, losing reputation keeps you awake. I remember reading somewhere, uh, someone saying the challenge at night is not about going to sleep. The issue is when I wake up, in my sleep, I can't go back because then I start thinking about all the things that go wrong. Uh, society expects you somehow to be a hero. Within your own company, the buck then stops with the entrepreneurial team, the, the founding team. You know, you need to sort out this, uh, these issues. And as I said, we are all human, so you have to be resilient against all odds. Uh, you always just have to keep your eye on the ball and focus on it that this is going to work because I have the pillars properly. Of course, every time you do something, especially in this part of the world where we think about things in a zero-sum way, 
people will take shots at you. If I think of our own entrepreneurial journey, I really think if it was in a more developed world and a team of managers said, you know what, we think we have a good idea and it's very difficult to execute in this behemoth uh, big financial services firm, we want to move faster. So we are going to leave as a team, CEO, CIO, head of legal, to investment. We are going to leave and start this in our own, on our own. If it's a more developed world, what you will see them saying is, okay, that's a good idea. Can we invest? Can we buy shares? But anybody who follows our stories, we really had to fight in the market to be able to actually say, wait a minute, all this is politics to stop us from taking off. The real issue is that the team has left and the previous platform is unhappy. So it's going to be very challenging. People will take shots at you, especially if you are attacking someone else's uh, space and you are not entitled to growth without being attacked. So you have to really, really work on yourself emotionally strength, be resilient, stick as a team, and that increases your chances of success. CSR, what do we do? Yes, we will help. Uh, we know when you talk about CSR, people think it's sponsoring things, giving out uh, stuff. We will do that, but our core CSR is based on the philosophy that teach somebody how to fish and they will always be able to feed themselves. So we took a view and said our CSR is always going to be uh, education, talent, training driven. So when you talk about CSR, I'm standing here doing CSR so that I can encourage entrepreneurs. Sight on Young Leaders Program, we always tell people for every one uh, position you want to fill, get four people and tell them we're only looking for one out of the four. The four will run through a 12-week internship and we hope that then the three will go out and say, I've gone through the site on Young Leaders Program. Because remember, you, we don't have to let you finish. If within two weeks we conclude this person has a bad attitude, we shall, let you, we shall uh, ask you to leave the program. If you are not doing your assignments, we shall ask you to leave your program. So when people then finish, uh, the market knows if somebody went through Cyton, this, this is somebody who has a good attitude and can work incredibly hard. So through the Cyton Young Leaders Program, Cyton Entrepreneurs Hub. So our CSR is really around building the mind, building cap capabilities, building skill set, because the key issue we have here is a, in this part of the world is capabilities and mindset and mentality. So that's our core uh, CSR. The question Ben was asking, I have many ideas. Is it Ben Mark? I have many ideas. Do I chase them all or pick one? My perspective is certainly pick one and not only one. The one that you pick, go ask other people to come help you chase it so that you chase it as a team. If you are doing too many things, the chances of success is also lower. Myself, I don't do any other thing other than Cyton. I only invest in Cyton. I don't sit on anyone's board. I don't run any other business. I don't invest in a matatu. So the core team is focused on nothing else but the business of Cyton. Again, to increase our probabilities of success. I don't know who does mathematics here, but that thing of increasing your probability really, really helps with succeeding. If you look at some of these brands that have worked, if the people behind them were being candid, the amount of hours they have to put in, and also talking about the challenges, the amount of damage it does to personal relationships, to family, the amount of hours you are away, the friendships that suffers, it is a lot of time. You can't afford to do uh, many things. There are many pain points in society, but to, to increase your chances of success, Pick the one that you feel, I as Ben Mark, this is the one that I'm really passionate and driven to resolve. And even then, as I said, get a team to work with you. Then uh, the question that the dean asked, uh, I think I've touched a little bit about challenge. What does Cyton mean? Now, interestingly, we invented the name. Uh, going back to your... your what is it called, tagline, invent the future. We were very clear about the opportunity we wanted to resolve. 
but we were also clear out how we wanted to brand ourselves. So we sat down and came up with a criteria. So number one criteria is that we had to invent the name. Whatever name we ended up with, we would type onto the internet and it's a name that cannot exist. And as you can see, you can see the effects. He's wondering where did you get this name? So to get a name that does not exist, and you can go ask the other co-founders, we, we sat around a table, four of us, and because we know that ultimately the name will be an arrangement of alphabetical letters. So then we said, now let's just play with the alphabets, making up names, and then we Google. If it, if it exists, then that's not our name. Secondly, it has to be two syllables. Uh, we thought that two syllable names have become the norm and accepted. You know, think about Z-Tech, Britam, Google, Yahoo, Sunlam. It's just two syllables. So it's, a, it's very easy to, to pronounce. Then it had to roll out of the tongue easily. It had another criteria is, again, I go back to this thing called being called uh, third world mentality. We knew that if it has a little bit of foreign feel, foreign look, then we are most likely to trust it. If we just called it, you know, Imaradaima Investments, you are going to look at it and say, ah, that, that is mediocre like our people, that's just one of us, I'm not gonna invest there. But when you see Saiton, you're like, maybe this is American, maybe this is British, and then we also got some Wazungus to sit on our board to make sure that it's actually uh, has the external look. So that was another criteria. And then I kind of slipped in the green. I used to work for, it's no longer there, but was an incredibly uh, great company. And for me, the CEO inspired me a lot, a guy called Dick Fold, who was the CEO of Lehman Brothers. If you go to the website and Google Lehman Brothers, the color for Lehman was green. We used to say people at Lehman bleed green. So I pushed that it's always, uh, uh, I push that the color should be green. And Lehman was known for one thing. Unfortunately, it got caught up in the glo global financial crisis. But Dick Ford always said, do the most amount of work with the little that we have. We are not Goldman Sachs, but we are going to execute better than Goldman so that we grow. He was a very direct uh, person, started as an intern at Lehman and in 32 years rose to become a CEO. So that's where the, the color came from. I think I've described pretty much uh, all the criteria. And then we are just going to launch it as Cyton without the round thing. And then a friend of ours who is a friend of the firm said, it looks so plain, I will give you something to put next to it. That exercise of branding, coming up with a name, color, thinking through it, took around three days just to come up with a name. Now, think about it. If you want to launch a brand, how, how much time do you take to actually think about the name? So you have to think very carefully about your market. Our market, we knew the issue is trust, and when it comes to finances, people tend to trust foreign brands because they've experienced the local brand, so that's how we uh, came up with the name. Then there was the final question on real estate. This one is a good one, and we do have an article out there, and I think we'll repackage and post it again. There has never been a bubble in the history of real estate anywhere in the world, a, a bubble burst that was not preceded with cheap credit, easy access to cheap credit. So what tends to happen is when you have easy access to cheap credit as we did in the US, and those are some of the things that ended up, to, ended up bringing Lehman's downfall, everybody borrows. Once they borrow, they go buy real estate. They don't even really look at the value. They buy real estate as the price goes up. You have cheap, easy and cheap access to credit and then it is in a rising uh, valuation uh, environment. As the price goes up, they look at the asset and then they sell it to the next person. In reality, they sell it to the next fool who then holds it a little bit, the price goes up. When the game ends, the price starts coming down dramatically. Remember, when there's easy access to credit, you can even borrow up to 105% of the value you are buying. So let's say, the real estate is worth 10 million. When there's easy access to credit, the bank will lend you even 11 million 
or 10.5 million. Essentially, you are buying real estate without putting in your own money, and they're also lending you to pay the legal expenses, conveyancing cost, all that. Now, think about it. When price starts going down, you wake up the next day, and the price has gone to 9 million. You owe 10.5 on it. What do you think happens? People then say, wait a minute. Our contract was, I borrowed 10 and a half. You have your collateral or security, which is real estate. The price has gone to nine. So I can't owe you 10 and a half million. And then this thing is valued at nine. So what happens, they, they just tell the bank, take your real estate. When everybody's doing that, the bank ends up with a lot of real estate, which then they end up auctioning, further bringing down the value of asset. And then you have a spiral down that is happening. Kenya is nowhere near that because first of all, credit is very hard to get. And when you get it, it's expensive. And even lending to real estate, you, you don't get 100%. You have to have some equity in it. So the possibility of having a bubble bust the way it has happened in other economies is, I would actually say the probability is closer to zero. What we have is softening of the real estate market, especially in some themes like um, office, office blocks in, in places like Upper Hill, we had an overbuilding. So prices will come down a little, but not to the point where people are willing to sell their real estate at a uh, throwaway price. There are places that are still thriving like in Ruaka where Dennis was, occupancy in Ruaka is 97%. Typical occupancy for residential communities is around 80%. So when you do your research, I keep going to what's your pain point. When we went to Ruaka, the pain point was occupancy is too high. If you want uh, uh, an apartment, it's not easy to get. And if you get it, it does not have comprehensive lifestyle amenities like gym, convenience store, daycare center, a lounge. So we asked ourselves, if we were to put a comprehensive apartment community here at the same price as others, would people take? And yes, people uh, took. So we don't have a real estate bubble. Uh, if you do your research, there are still very, very attractive places to invest. And if I look at ourselves as a brand, we have sold a lot more real estate than we have delivered. So we need to raise the money to continue with uh, the delivery. I hope this answers the last set of questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we need to give a good clap to the presenter for answering the questions. Uh, I don't know, we, we do it the more way. Huh? So one, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> to, to work as it as a can. So can we clap? Kunga. <laughs> Kungua. <laughs> so uh, we, we want to appreciate you, Edwin, for our work well done, and even accepting our invitation. We want to appreciate the DVC and her team for organizing, the chairman of the department. I want to appreciate the students and members of faculty for participating. One of the things I want to encourage you is that a university is a place for exchanging thoughts. This is the only place you can have free exchange for no pay. If you call this man for a consultancy or that one, because I know he's a consultant, for one hour, they charge you in dollars. Uh, and, and therefore, having to get that for free, uh, Edwin, we really sincerely appreciate. I'm sure there is a, a, a real estate owner who have been born here. I know there is a new entrepreneur who have been born here. So we want to thank you for being an inspiration to our students. And we look forward uh, to further engagement. And may the Lord bless Satan as he blesses, uh, blesses Zitek together with the students and staff and everybody involved. God bless us. And may I now request uh, one of the students to come and say a closing prayer.